Uh, it's a great privilege and honor for me to introduce the next speaker, uh, the Minister of Science, Industry <coughs> and Technology uh, uh, of Turkish Republic, uh, Minister uh, Fikri Ishik. Uh, we share the same university. We graduated from the same, same university. And, and uh, let me mention that the president of the university is also here, Ahmed Ajar, with us. Uh, Fikri Ishik and I have crossed paths a few times in the last few years uh, in Berlin, as well as in, in Ankara and in Istanbul. Uh, he's a graduate from the education faculty from uh, the Middle East Technical University studying mathematics. And for many years, he was a mathematics and English teacher. And then uh, in 2000, um, he decided to go into politics, something difficult for all of us. And uh, he uh, was uh, uh, in, at many levels of Justice and Development Party. And then in the last two cabinets, uh, he's the Minister of Industry and Science. And it's a great privilege to, to have him here. Distinguished scientists and scholars, dear students, estimated guests, before proceeding my remarks, I would like to extend my sincere greetings to all of you. I would like to present our Prime Minister best wishes to as well. I am very pleased to attend the TASA 2016 conference and address you all. I would like to thank the organizers for their invitation particularly to co-chairs uh, Esen Alp and Burhanettin Sandıkçı. TASA President Haluk Unal and my special thanks to University of Chicago Provost Mr. Eric Isaacs. I would, like, I would also like to thank uh, two people of United States of America. America contains within his history many of the best virtues of humanity. Americans' ability to live together with all races and religions as second, none, as second to none in the modern world. Humanity owes America a debt of graduate for leading by example in this regard. I'm particularly honored to be speaking here at the University of Chicago. The university is, a fam is famous for many things. It played a major role in famous debate between Keynesian and monetarist economics. It's known as fortress of monetarism. Perhaps, perhaps coincidentally, and with no offense to the Keynesians, the University of Chicago holds the record for producing successful business leaders and billionaires. The name of this year's conference is Science and Society. I would like to congratulate the organizers for choosing such a relevant theme at such a critical moment in human history. Science and society have always transformed one another. For example, metallurgy and animal domestication contributed to the rise of agrarian society. With the wheel and sailing, humanity explored international trade. Eventually, mathematics become the language of science. Arithmetics, algebra, calculus, all led to the Renaissance. Dur during the Renaissance, the impact of science on society became undeniable. Uh, Scientific thinking became a philosophy of society. You may agree that the group of the most benefit society has now become scientists. I'm sure you agree it hasn't been politicians. Scientists have worked to elevate standards of living all, all over the world. Thanks to developments in medicine, life expectancy has increased and infant mortality has dropped. Within only four years, the bubonic plague killed a third of the population of Europe and 75 million people worldwide. Today, the plague can easily be threatened. It should be noted, however, that scientists also share responsibility for the most damage to society. Scientists and engineers have developed the weapons of modern warfare. The most modern war, 
the American Civil War resulted in 750,000 deaths. The First World War, the number was 38 million. 85 million were killed in World War II. Science amplifies the actions of society and individuals. Where we wish to do good or evil, to help or hurt, scientists carry a tremendous burden. In order to steer society towards a brighter future, VB must not divorce science from ethics. The Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, said, the best of humanity are those that most benefit mankind. Therefore, scientists who work toward the benefit of humanity are among the best of us. Dear guests, scientific and technological advancement require a certain social and cultural ecosystem, an ecosystem conducive to innovation. Historically, such ecosystems have formed in many places around the world. Examples include Athens of ancient Greece, by that in the 9th century, Andalus under the Umayyads, Istanbul under the Ottomans, and Chang'an under the Tang dynasty. In modern times, places like Silicon Valley come to mind. Today's scientific and technological gains should be regarded as the common heritage of mankind. Scientific knowledge has flowed through time and geography. It is carried and built upon. Newton said that he stood on the shoulders of giants. Archimedes, al jazeri al Hazan, Fermi, Maxwell, and Feynman are some of the giants whose shoulders, whose shoulders upon we now stand. For example, were it not uh, for Ibn Rushd, Western civilization might not understand Aristotle. As Pastor said, Science knows no boundaries, for knowledge belongs to all mankind. We need an opportunity to collaborate has never been greater as borders and distance have lost their impedance. The concept of open science gains importance each day. Scientific contribution and technological innovation no longer belong to geniuses. They are realized by teams, as Eric said before. Uh, when we think of calculus, we think of Al-Harazmi, Newton or Leibniz. However, modern inventions seldom have a single name attached to them. Science has become the common asset of humanity rather than that of Eve. The Human Genome Project, the International Space Station, and various efforts of, at CERN are great examples of open sciences. Scientists from all over the world have participated and will continue to participate in such projects. What's even more important that information and data acquired through these programs will be offered to the service of all humanity. We are perfectly aware that limiting ourselves to the physical boundaries among countries is pointless. We would never regard the Turkish scientists living abroad as a loss for our country either. Dr. Aziz Sanjar, the Turkish-American Nobel Prize's winner, is a great example. We acknowledge that Dr. Sanjar and others consider their work a national duty performed abroad. In fact, their work is more than a duty to a single nation, but rather to all of humanity. The scientific work that they conduct here in the United States reaches beyond geographical borders. It reaches through time. It moves upon the work of our ancestors and touches the lives of our descendants. The government of Turkey strives to provide Turkish scientists in Turkey and abroad within the best opportunities and research infrastructure. Turkey aims to become a hub of science where scientists and students from all disciplines can meet and collaborate. But we need the help of Turkish scientists living abroad. We need your help. To, end, uh, to that end, we now hold a yearly congress in Turkey for Turkish scientists living abroad. We also organize Destination Turkey workshops in various parts of the world. So far, over 2,100 Turkish foreigners 
and foreign researchers have participated in 19 events. Destination Turkey workshops will be held at MIT and Yale uh, later this week. We will share our insights within the Turkish scientists and students and inform them about the latest scientific and technological developments in Turkey. Thanks to the Horizon 2020 initiative and the support of TÜBİTAK, more than 800 researchers have chosen to return to Turkey in recent years. We are planning to increase this figure. Dear guests, Turkey has undergone a significant change in recent years. Comparing 2002 with 2015, exports have increased from 36 billion to 145 billion US dollars. According to the economic figures announced this Tuesday, Thursday, the Turkish economy beat forecast and grew by 4% in 2015. The Turkish economy has been growing consecutively in the last 50, uh, 25 quarters. Despite the turmoil surrounding us, we have succeeded in becoming the fourth fastest growing economy, economy in G20. Let me express that the national budget, which was 119 billion TL, T, Turkish liras in 202, reached 570 billion this year. Utilization of financial resources has changed tremendously. Compared to the past, Turkey allocates much more to education, science, and technology. In 2002, the ratio of R&D spending to national income was 0.5%. The ratio increased to more than 1% in 2014. We are planning to increase it more to 3% in coming years. In the past 14 years, universities have been established in every city in Turkey. There were only two operational technology development zones back in 2002, whereas today we have 49. Many universities now have technology transfer offices to help build private industry. Despite these positive developments, we have a long way to go. Turkey has successfully completed the first leap. Now is the time for the second leap, especially with science and technology. The most come up with uh, better R&D projects and concrete uh, concentrate on the commerce, commercialization of the R&D outputs. Our goal is to make the share of high-tech products at least 15%. Groundbreaking reforms have been made in a wide range of areas, such as strengthening university-industry collaboration, introducing science to children at early ages, support for high-tech entrepreneurship, and developing system to protect intellectual property. We have recently introduced a comprehensive R&D reform package that will strengthen the R&D and innovation ecosystem as a whole. Just to give an idea, the income of academics engaged in industry collaboration projects has increased significantly. We are planning to revise the institutional structure of TÜBİTAK so that R&D's projects will be better funded and entrepreneurs will have better support mechanism. We are also planning on reforming Turkish Academy of Sciences. It is imperative that we regularly seek the advice of Turkish scientists living abroad. We must emphasize once again that your experience and knowledge is extremely valuable to us. I now would like to discuss some projects in Turkey. We are currently working on the creation of native automobile brands in Turkey. We are developing new geographic positioning system. Autonomic vehicles, autonomous vehicles, and the intervehicular uh, communications. We want the native auto brands to include new technologies that are not available in any others. We are ready and eager to establish partnership with scientists who have ideas, projects, or work on new technologies 
to be used in the national auto brands. We hope to cooperate with you in all projects. The Information Technologies Valley, established in any area of more than 3 million square meters, is another national endeavor for Turkey. The Information Technologies Valley will host high-tech companies and is to enroll to become one of the most important technology development hub in the world. I invite scientists and students with an entrepreneurial speed to come and join us there. You are also invited to cooperate in many other such areas such as semiconductors, defense, computing, energy, space technologies, and many others. For those of you working in these fields, we are ready to equip with you with the most powerful tools and opportunities. Distinguished guests, Turkey is located in a challenging place. Recent events in Ukraine, Iraq, and Syria have contributed to these challenges. Turkey has lived with a cancer of terrorism for many decades, more than most. We realize that it's a disease that hurts of all, all of humanity. Many have said that one man's freedom fighter is another's terrorist. This is wrong. Freedom fighters oppose armies, terrorists attack civilizations. They are totally different. Like cancer, it must be fought or it will spread unpredictably. It cannot be controlled and or contained. By the way, as Haluk Bey says, are not related to academic activities, are not relevant to academic performance. They are relevant to support of terrorism. Let me express that. It goes without saying that it will take come to time for global economy to make up for the losses caused by the recent turmoil. For a speedy recovery, we need to further increase the investments made in science and technology. These are vital issues and must never be used in political arguments. We are certain that every individual who loves and cares about Turkey agrees with this approach. In methods of survival for humanities as a whole and our nations in particular, we must converse with understanding and tolerance. As I conclude my remarks, I would like to thank the scientists of humanity of America and Turkey. I also extend my wishes to success to the students who are with us today. Many of you followed your dreams and come all the way here. It's my personal request to all of you. Please keep ch chasing dreams. I wish you a successful conference. Thank you very much.